Hey guys and welcome to the Scale. So today I want to do something that I do very rarely on this channel. Show the case study with clicks, traffic figures and everything in between. And I want to show a case study that is very dear to me since I was able to recover one of my main websites which is Trigno.ai. And I did that following the Trident SEO approach that I sometimes preach even though I'm not an SEO. I'm just trying things out and I'm reporting back what is working for me and has been working for me for a while now. So back to my website. First I want to give you a little bit of context. Let's go to search results and let's go 16 months. So even though I it shows May, I started in February of 2023. I think it was February 2nd or February 3rd. And things like immediately took off because I was uh, one of the only websites back then that was talking about AI detection exclusively. There were some videos here and there, some resources here and there, but I'm pretty sure I was the only website that had a lot of blog posts uh, dedicated to AI detection and text humanization. So it took me about a couple of weeks to see the first clicks and then just went from there and at the all-time high which was December 2023 I was averaging way over 1000 clicks per day and that's where things uh, got a little sour. Lots of big sites started harvesting my keywords. I won't be naming any names but it was just funny how uh, one of the websites would have dropped me from the rankings uh, and would just go uh, keyword by keyword one by one and uh, I did a lot of things to recover but then the the uh, multiple Google updates hit and the last uh, Google spam update uh, which was March took me by surprise and I got hit and I think I have a video about that and I started uh, dropping in traffic every day so around the Google update I had almost 1000 clicks 500 clicks 300 clicks let me go back to 12 months so I think this summer I was at the all-time low which was 150 and 160 clicks which was like a roughly 90% drop from my original traffic. That's where I had a choice. I could either sell the website or I could do something about it. And I tried selling the website, but nobody wanted it, at least for the price that I was asking, even though it was a website that was making money consistently. And then I decided that it was a sign not to sell the website. And I brainstormed ways of recovering the traffic. And this is where one of the first steps took place, August 3rd. Again, I was almost at the all-time low with 130 clicks and things have been taken off from there. So 200 clicks, 300 clicks, 400 clicks and I've just recently hit 600 clicks and if we go to my analytics you can see that I am way over 1000 sessions per day. I've hit it multiple times already and I have no reason to think I won't be doing that in the future. So what did I do? Let me go over the steps and this is going to be a mini tutorial and in the future if you want me to cover one of the topics in more detail please let me know and I will do just that. So first thing first it was a realization that I could not be uh, competitive at this point. I did do backlink building. Uh, if we go to my hrefs and I don't know what it is but hrefs way 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 downgrades the actual traffic of my website. So the domain rating is 23 so it's somewhat competitive it's on the lower side side but still I've got 100 plus referring domains the traffic is estimated at 4000 and I won't be able to vouch the amount of keywords I'm ranking for I'm not tracking oh <laughs> 3.5 thousand keywords but I guess this is uh, semi-accurate while the traffic again is way 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 off so as you can see if we go last 28 days I've got 11,000 clicks not very accurate so I decided that I could not compete with the large brands that were harvesting my keywords I took a long hard look at my keywords and I realized that everything Turnitin related was ranking while the other stuff was not I purged a lot of articles I don't remember the exact number I think I was around 130 articles at the time and I'm pretty sure I purged 50 plus or even 60 articles so that was around half of my articles the way I did it again this is not something that I am recommending this is what I did I looked at pages uh, which is URLs I filtered them by zero clicks so for example this one originality AI review I looked at the historical performance say six months and I saw that even on a good day I was getting a couple of clicks per month 
So that was nothing to worry about. And I just straight deleted those posts. So I did not de-index uh, this post. So if we go to my website, you will see that this post does not exist. <laughs> and it's uh, it redirects to my homepage. With the other posts that used to bring a lot of traffic, but they were dormant and uh, nothing was happening for a while despite my efforts, I just redirected them to the most relevant pages on my website. And basically, I refocused my brands around turning in and a detection and text communication. So step number one, once again, was realizing that I needed to niche down even further. So I niched down to turning in. And step two was purging, as in deleting a lot of posts. That was step two. Step three, I did rewrite a lot of content because one of the things was that prior to my all-time low, some of my posts had not been rewritten or updated in almost a year. So I took a long, hard look and I rewrote it in a couple of ways. So I used Perplexity AI. I used my prompts from my Helpful Content Mastery course that I will be rebranding soon. Some of you have even seen the new homepage and I've added a bunch of very valuable lessons like automation, like uh, adding interactive elements to a web page. So uh, around 50% rewritten with my prompts from the Helpful Concept Mastery course. And for all the articles, I used Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and I used the focus mode, the standard mode that is by default with the pro toggle all the way to the right. And the rest of the articles I've rewritten with Agility Writer. And even with the articles that I already had, I internally linked everything using Agility Writer's internal linking feature. Because I think I found it uh, to be very helpful. So there is a uh, bulk advanced mode where you can insert internal links. So I think this now I can do 100 internal links, which was perfect because I had around 70 to 75 posts at the time. The settings that I used, I think that were the, they were the default ones. So with the only exception was that I changed the model once again to Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, but everything else was like this, custom factual data, precision plus semantics, concise, concise. I did not do FAQs. I did entity enrichment and negative terms and yeah, and I used the inbuilt Agility Writer feature that allowed me to optimize the article with Neuron Writer. So they were automatically optimized with Neuron Writer's keywords. That is an amazing feature. Again, outside from Surfer SEO, which is uh, which natively integrates with Surfer SEO, this is uh, the only AI writer that does that. So that was step number three. Once again, step number one, niching down. Step number two, purging a lot of posts. Step number three, rewriting and internally linking the content using the default settings. And for those who want to grab Agility Writer, I have a coupon code, which will be on display right now. Uh, and that was all as far as content goes, but I decided to go above and beyond. And since it was such an interesting topic for my audience, I created a newsletter. And this now reads join 6,000 members. Let's take a look. And for those of you who don't know, I'm using Beehive and I actually have three newsletters. So I have my worst scale newsletter, which is around 5,400 active members with the average open rate of 27%. Then I have the trickminot.ai which is 6,300 subscribers and a 28% open rate, so very similar. And I've recently launched a Writer Watch newsletter, which has 1,300 members and a 40% open rate at the time of the recording. So I'm actually operating three different newsletters. Trick Me Not goes off on, on a Tuesday, Writer Watch on a Wednesday, and Worst Scale on a Thursday. And I have decided to do it like this, because these are actually three separate audiences. So Trick Me Not is text humanization and AI detection, Worst Scale is SEO, blogging, and AI, and Writer Watch is AI writers only. And the neat feature inside of Beehive is as follows. You can make it so each of your newsletters recommends the other two. So if you go to my recent writer watch, look at grow and then recommendations, recommending you, you will see that 54 subscribers came from the main worst of scale newsletter, while 134 subscribers came from treatment Not. And this works in a trio. So treatment Not is recommended for the scale, worst of scale is recommended writer watch and so on and so forth. So I've created this newsletter. And if we go inside of the newsletter, it's actually quite interesting. Let's um, take a look at the previous one, for example. So I'm giving first the A detection news. 
and then a success story or a case study that has to do with tax humanization. And then I'm usually revealing a free tool that you can use. Sometimes I'm mentioning my tools, but oftentimes I'm mentioning tools by somebody else, which is then concluded by CDA to check my free tools. I have my free Torrentine score estimator, which is another tool, and my free tax humanizer. So after I've launched the newsletter, and this means I'm not relying on Google anymore, and I have a loyal base, I launched a free tax humanizer, and that was simpler than I thought. So I had uh, already prompts. The only problem was that those prompts work best with Cloth 2.1, and no solution at the time of the recording allowed for a free access to my subscribers to Cloth 2.1. So Paul required a subscription for my subscribers. A tool called PCAX that I was using for a few weeks um, did not require a subscription, but it did not have Cloth 2.1, and it has no plans of introducing those legacy models. So I was stuck at custom development and I found a guy in Fiverr who took my prompt and basically connected them to the API. So every time you use the free text humanizer, I'm paying. <laughs> so uh, appreciate that. And so again, this is a free text humanizer. So after I've launched my newsletter, I've decided to launch the next logical thing, which was a free text humanizer. I'm not saying this is the best humanizer ever, even though I'm getting a lot of compliments, but this is 100% free. You get three tries per IP, I think. And yeah, and I already have people expressing interest in buying the subscription. I do not currently offer any subscription to this, but I may. So I have currently two tools on my website, the free tax humanizer that I've just shown you, and the free Turnitin check, another problem that many students have, are false positives with Turnitin, and I've run a huge correlation analysis, testing different tools, and how well they correlate with the actual Turnitin results, and zero GPT came first, that's what she said. And yeah, so this is a very popular tool that people love. Now, there is actually a step number six, because once I did all this, the question arises on how to find new keywords. I'm looking at keyword research very differently now to what I used to a few years ago when I was using keyword research tools. But now what I did, and this is a very, very neat trick, and this is step number six, is to go to your Google Search Console, go to Search Results, New, then Query, and then you need to choose something that is called regex, I think, custom regex, and then insert this formula here, which is basically all the question modifiers, who, what, where, when, why, how, was, did, blah, blah, blah. You hit on apply, and suddenly go to queries, and suddenly you get all the questions. So out of all of your queries, you only get the question-based ones. How to use the Turnitin AA checker, does Turrentine detect Snapchat? Is Scriber the same as Turrentine? How to reduce AI in Turrentine? And then what I did, I again went for the uh, questions that had zero clicks, and it was likely I did not have content around that keyword. So I chose uh, questions with a lot of impressions and zero clicks. And I wrote a bunch of content based on these keywords as well that I started to rank. So once again, this is my success story using a six step process. Let me just recap once again, so I don't forget. <laughs> so step number one is niching down. Step number two, purging content. Step number three, writing and internal link linking. Step number four, creating a newsletter. Step number five, creating tools. And step number six is finding new keywords to write content for and rank. So hopefully this was helpful. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.